Okay, hi. This is Kaylee. I am going to do a review of Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows Part 1. Um, no lucky you probably didn't agree with my last review, but I stick by it anyway. <clears throat> this review is going to be really much better, actually, because I actually liked Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. It stuck really, really close to the story. There was only a couple things I had a problem with. And even those weren't major problems. They just um, were kind of like plot holes. I guess. Well, not really plot holes, neither. But like, um, like the Dursleys, for example. I I understand why the scene was cut so short, but I was kind of hoping that it would have been a little bit longer, because in the book, um, <clears throat> and I guess I should say from here on in, there will probably be spoilers before I say anything about the book. Um, so if you don't want spoilers, then you should stop watching now. In the book, like I was saying about the Dursleys, is that there was a whole drawn out scene with Harry and his uncle and then Vernon and Harry, which I'd actually enjoyed reading, um, that Vernon wasn't really so scared of going with wizards, he was just scared of going without Harry, and then they kind of left that whole thing out of the movie, but I can understand why. Although I did really enjoy the scene, um, with Hermione, uh, erasing herself from her parents' life. Because, I mean, in the book it's just mentioned, and in the movie it's so much more effective when you can see it, because you can see how much she's giving up and how her heart breaks and everything. And I really enjoyed, like, the beginning scenes all together. And I think my favorite scene, actually, from the movie would be, um, the scene with Harry and Ginny kissing in the kitchen, with George kind of sneaking around behind them and just giving them those looks. That was really funny. Um, so yeah, it stuck really close to the book, and I didn't have a lot of troubles with it. Um, uh, a few of the other things was, I kind of wish Creature was in it a little bit more, and the total lack of the invisibility cloak, considering it was used quite a bit in the book and they just didn't, for some reason, seem to even have it in the movie. Um, that was the only thing that really bothered me was the whole lack of invisibility cloak, but it still worked without it, I guess, and um, it would have been interesting to see uh, Wormtail kill himself with his hands. Um, I've been looking on Yahoo Answers a lot lately, and a lot of people are complaining about the movie not mentioning the Horcruxes, and what the rest of the Horcruxes actually are, and the only thing I have to say for all those people is, I read the book up to where, um, Voldemort got the Elder Wands, and there is no mention of the other Horcruxes, other than, like, the ones already destroyed in the locket, of course. Um, so, I've read the book before, but don't quite remember everything in it. So I'm figuring the other Horcruxes are mentioned in Chapter 25 and beyond. So for those of you who are upset that the other Horcruxes weren't mentioned, they weren't mentioned in the book, neither. So, they will be mentioned in the second part. And also for those of you who thought Voldemort got Elder Wand too soon, considering the story followed the book fairly closely, that's exactly where he's supposed to get the Elder Wand. So, he didn't get it too soon at all. Um... So yeah, I'm, just, I'm really excited to, for the second part to come out, and I'll probably end up going seeing the first part again several times. 
because it's a really good movie. I think it's my favorite movie so far, actually. Um, they're all grown up, and they're, they do really well carrying the action themselves. And uh, Ron does a complete turnaround, of course. He's not exactly funny. He has to, like, be serious and, and you know, sort of, I don't know, I guess be more grown up and whatnot. So, yeah, I really enjoyed the movie, and I'm glad that they stuck really close to the book. They, they changed a few things around, you know, like in the book, Hedwig was, was shot in her cage between Harry's legs, and in the movie, she was shot, um, or killed, whatever, um, while flying to protect Harry, which is apparently why Harry was given away instead of his Expelleramus, um, spell. But, I mean, overall, everything stays the same, so these slight differences aren't really all that important. But I am really looking forward to the second one, because I think it's going to have a lot of action in it, and I'm just really looking forward to it. So, for all of you who want to go see Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1, I would definitely recommend it, because, like I said, it is one of, like, maybe my favorite movie of the entire series right now. It has a running time of almost two and a half hours, but it is so worth it, and you don't even realize you're sitting there for that long, because it's such an excellent movie. So, that's my review for Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. Coming in July will be my review for Deathly Hallows, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. Okay, peace out. Bye.